Welcome to the Eye on Annapolis Local Business Spotlight. There are thousands of locally owned businesses in the area, some small and some large. Some you may know and others you don't. But one thing they all have in common is a great story, and we want to share it with you. Join us every Saturday as we talk to the founders, the owners, and the managers of local businesses you have come to know and love, and those you will come to know and love. Now here's your host, John Frenet, with this week's Local Business Spotlight. We made the trek up to Saberna Park today to Park Fitness, and we are here with Joe Bosick and Danny O'Malley. We are up here at Park Fitness because I have heard good things about this place, and I will say that I am friends with at least two of your members. I'm going to be having uh, dinner actually later this week with Eva Barson and her husband, Joe, and they're just absolutely wonderful people. And I know that Kevin Cheney is also a customer here. And that really sort of shoots your reputation right through the floor. <laughs> um, <laughs> you know, you're so up there with Eva and right. then you shot it right down with Cheney. Balances with his, it uh, <laughs> yeah, guilt by association. Uh, but no, both, both really, really great people. And actually, they both raved about what's going on. So we want to come up here and check it out and find out what it is. Now, Park Fitness is here at 564 Ritchie Highway, which is the Park Plaza Shopping Center, I believe it's called, and it's tucked in the back. Kind of, I think Arthur's uniforms used to kind of be in this area. Uh, yeah, so uh, Arthur's wife is Sue. She owns the cottage next door, and they actually just opened up Open in Annapolis. Annapolis. Okay. You know? So they're right next door. So yeah, we're right next to the cottage and right next to Joanne's from there. Okay, and I see right across the street from an axe throwing business. So. Just opened up about a year ago. Yeah, and they seem to be doing pretty good. They're they're picking up. You know, it's a definitely hard to open a business during COVID. You know what the secret to throwing an axe is? Is you keep your elbow up and you release it high. As far as yeah, you know, I I did it once and someone told me that. I think we learned that and then forgot that. <laughs> yeah. And then learned it again when we went back the second time. Yeah, we, we, yeah, we, we got to practice. I'm, I'm, I'm going to go to one of these places, get things, and then I'm going to go, like, kill at the Renfest later this summer. I mean, they're not going to know what hit them. Those axes are hard to throw at Renfest. I don't know if you've ever done I that. I know, and they, and they dull them at the, during the day so they don't say. It's like, you know, like, like, the, like the darts and the balloons, you know. The, the <laughs> carnival game, They're, they're right? certainly gaming the system, yeah. The house um, wins. But you guys really seem like different gym to me. And I mean, I've been snooping around on the website and everything else. And the way people are talking to you, I say it's almost borderline cult uh, to a point, which is probably not a bad thing. I mean, you're not drinking Kool-Aid, not serving Kool-Aid or anything like that. But what, you know, what, what Kevin and Eva have told me is that this is all about a community more than a gym. And I thought that was really kind of interesting because, you know, you guys are both, you know, buffing in shape and everything else. So uh, I'm here to balance things out at the table. But, you know, th- most people really, um, I-, I think, are probably averse, the majority of the population, averse to gyms. Not like, oh, I, I hate them. It's just it doesn't fit into the schedule. It's not convenient. It's, you know, whatever reason it may be sure. um, or they or they can do it. But the folks that are here that I know are excited to come back here. And I want to find out why. Uh, so tell me, how do, how do we get started here at Park Fitness? Uh, well, let's see, kind of talking to the idea of um, how most people aren't gym members. And you're 100% right. Um, Pre-COVID, I think the national average was probably around 19% of any population has a gym membership. It doesn't even mean they, they go. It just means they have <laughs> right, one, right? Uh, so you're talking about so a it's huge, like most gyms love that January month. You yeah, know, they love it, right? <laughs> Fill them up and then, yeah, two weeks later, right? So, yeah, there's a lot of people who don't. And, um, you know, I think for us, it was always sort of, um, yeah, I think we're maybe a little more empathetic than a lot of people. So for us, it's like, man, what would we want a gym to be like? And how do you make it just a little bit more fun? How do you make it a little bit more enjoyable? You know, like you want to be recognized when you walk in, you know, you want to be uh, noticed for progress that you're making. You want to be cheered along the way. And we've had members tell us like, hey, uh, what other, not only gym, but business, do the owners meet you at the front door, greet you by name and give you a high five as you're coming in, right? Uh, and that's just I don't even know if it was ever something we planned. It was just part of our fabric. For the record, I only got a handshake. Okay? Yes. I, did, I, did, I didn't get a high five. I got a join, join to get a high five. Well, so. John, we've never <laughs> seen you before. We're always we formal at first. <laughs> and then you'll notice real quickly that kind of dissipates. <laughs> but you talk about feeling welcome and feeling in place. And, and I don't think they're in business anymore, but there was a women's only gym at one point, probably 10 years ago. And it, it, was, it was, and that was 
a thing. You know, the the ladies didn't want to go out and work out and, you know, with a bunch of muscle heads and, you know, banging the weights and everything else. They wanted their own little place, which I, I totally understand. That's a, a feeling of being. And that's sort of what you've created here for just pretty much the everyday man, though, right? Yeah, very much so. Um, you know, I, I think, you know, I, we typically find in personal training, uh, you typically have a higher percentage female than, than male. And you could use the stereotype, you know, guys already know they're going to go and do the couple sets of bench press. And then, all right, that was a good workout for today. I'll see you next time. Right. And they kind of know what they're doing. Um, but typically most gyms and we are a personal training heavy gym, right? That's really what we do. We're a training studio. Uh, most gyms like that are going to lean a little bit more heavy, uh, female dominant anyway. Right. So we're probably 60 percent, uh, 65 percent uh, women and about 35 percent that guys. explains shaney's membership and that's just there <laughs> you go now you know what he uh, yeah and, and that's one of the interesting things and we've learned over the years that uh, a lot of guys that join our facility maybe had some apprehension or some trepidation because they felt uncomfortable so typically training um kind of going in there and to joe's point there are a lot of times i think where people think you know especially guys we know it all we know how to lift we know what we're doing and we don't um, want to ask for directions exactly exactly <laughs> um however we've come to find that there are a lot of guys out there that are intimidated by approaching a trainer and and admitting that maybe I don't know what I'm doing and seeking help and they feel like they're going to be judged um, and we've we've heard that so many times guys will come in and say um, you know I've heard that you guys are really empathetic and welcoming and inclusive and I've got to experience it for myself because something's got to change I'm not figuring this thing out it's been 20 years I'm training like I was when I was 25 and it's just not working anymore uh, so a lot of guys come in here maybe a little apprehensive and then they learn like wait a minute like I can work with a trainer. It doesn't have to be this intimidating thing. Nobody's going to judge me uh, for how in or out of shape I am. And it ends up being a pleasant experience. How old is your, your customer base? I mean, you, 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 just, you just threw out there, there's a guy I'm working out like I was 25 years ago. Well, great point. So if you take Severna Park and you subtract out the kids, and let's call it college age and under the kids, all of a sudden that average age jumps a lot, right? So, you know, we, you know, we will train some high schoolers and college uh, students, but that's not our forte. So you'll start looking at the parents and all of a sudden that average age pushes to that over 40 population. So most of our members, you know, are over 40. Some are probably, uh, probably that average age rated on 50, I'd say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. What's driving these folks to come in to get personal training at Park Fitness? It's a great question. A lot of people just want to feel good, right? They realize, hey, yeah, I'm 50, but that doesn't mean my life is close to being over and they're still very active. Maybe they play golf or tennis. They have a hobby or activity that they want to compete at or, or just feel good doing, right? And I think that's so much of it. So, of course, we have a lot of people coming in that, that want to lose weight. You know, that initially is a strong motivator for people sure. to get started. Uh, but long term, kind of sticking with it, uh, people, they want to feel strong. They want to feel good. They want to have energy. You know, when they go on a vacation, they want to be able to go experience. Explore and, and live their best life. And that for so many people seems to be the resounding long term goal, whether they realize that or not. In the beginning, they start to have those aha moments as they get a little bit stronger and start to you know, unlock these doors, some things they weren't able to do. And that's that's powerful. So yes, when the kids go off to college, when the parents start to realize that they're still still living to go, yeah. living to go. Life goes on, right? <laughs> kids are always a problem. <laughs> <laughs> Don't say that. Yeah, right. I know. Yeah, Danny uh, is expecting. Well, he's not expecting, but uh, you know, his fiance is expecting. And, Congratulations! Uh, yeah, yeah, in uh, about six weeks. Six weeks. Good deal. Yeah. First one. First one. Wow. Okay. I just got rid of my third. <laughs> so, so she just, just moved up to Manhattan. She's living in New York, living That's her great. best life. And uh, the locksmith just left the house. The locks have changed. And, well, congratulations. <laughs> and, we're, and, and we're there. But um, now, do you guys focus? Okay. You said personal training. Okay. Is this one on one? I mean, because everything I've seen to think is a very heavy group training. And, and again, that probably ties into the whole community thing. It's like, you're two guys, but I think probably a lot of the success goes on f not necessarily your encouragement, but the encouragement of everybody else that's that's out there. Is yeah, so um, we are social creatures, right? We do so many things in groups. And if you really look around, you know, the landscape of everything we do, whether it's karate lessons or swim lessons or trivia night out somewhere, you know, everything happens in groups. And uh, what we've seen is really over the last probably 15 years, you've seen people treat fitness the same way. And group, so classes have been around forever, right? But, you know, we do obviously some large group stuff. Uh, we call it team training. It's been an idea that's been around for some time. Uh, we didn't invent it. We think we do it pretty well, though. Um, but also, the, I think 
one of our other cornerstones is our small group personal training, right? And you look at that and um, just give you a little uh, background. When the economy tanked in 08, uh, this idea of small group or sometimes we call it semi-private training was just on the upswing. And the economy tanked and all of a sudden it changed the consumer and the consumer wanted more for less. So how can I get my personal training session in but at the same time, not pay as much, right? So it's like, well, wait a minute. Most one-on-one sessions are part working out, part therapy, part, let me tell you about my weekend and chatting, right? What if you remove a lot of that? You can still have some interaction, but now you're sharing the time and attention of that coach. So what we love about it is because we're such social creatures, it allows people to bond. It's such a great way for them to create connections um, above themselves. And most people want to work out for something bigger than themselves sometimes. It's like, oh man, you know what? Jennifer's going to be like, where were you if I don't show up? Right. right? So it's a little added uh, accountability there too. So you're building up that peer pressure that we used to fear as teens. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> don't tell anybody, John. That's our secret. <laughs> well, it's no, no. And I think different people have different ways. I mean, personally, I tend to be more of a, a loner, but you know, some people do thrive on the group stuff. And now when you talk about personal training, I mean, how much of your business is one-on-one versus semi-personal? It's a great question. Most of it is is semi-private, right, in a small group or a large group. So we really don't do a whole lot of one-on-one um, to that reason Joe was talking about, just that that concept of community um, and, and attention. So what's nice about how we operate, because you hear groups, well, how, how am I going to get that attention, right? As a consumer, you probably look at it like, I thought I needed one-on-one. How are they going to account for my knee injury or this ache or pain that I'm experiencing? And the reality is, you know, most people probably don't have to train radically different from one another. If we look at what the human body can do it can do so many things right yeah right and, but when you when you sum that all up in a category it's really not that many basic movement patterns right like you've got maybe like seven that we would kind of shrink it down to so most people can pretty much do the same types of movements then from there it's modifying to fit uh, the individual to that exercise so let's say john you've got a knee issue right and lunges you just know that that's not going to work for you um well can we still train your quads and your glutes absolutely we just aren't going to do lunges right if that's what's on the menu for today. We might have you do a squat variation or a hinge of the hips to make it more glute dominant. So there's kind of uh, this triage, right, that we go down and look at, okay, let's let's start here and here's the program and then we'll modify based on any limitations and whatnot. Um, so it's not as um, vast as you might think it would be. Like I have all these issues and I need this, you know, uber customized program. Um, it's just simply not necessary. Well, how do you, how do you customize, you, know, you said to a degree, you know, have them do a different exercise if you got a bad knee or a, you know, a lower back issue or whatever it may be. I mean, how, how do we do business with you? How do we work with Park Fitness? In any setting that we have, um, whether it's a large group or a small group, we always build in modifications, right? And, you know, part of this is, uh, you know, Denny and I, we're, we're students of the game. We, we've been around for a while. Um, I've been a trainer for tw- 22 years. Denny's been going 15 years. Um, so we've been in personal training, not just in fitness, but in personal training a long time. So we've really, we've had many years to cut our teeth. A lot of that obviously is in one-on-one scenarios where we're able to modify, modify, modify. And then you take that and, you know, constantly learning new things. And now all of a sudden we're able to say, hey, listen, we build this in. We're going to have uh, John over here is going to give me a squat pattern because of his knee, but I'm going to have Jennifer and Michael over here still give me that lunge pattern. And I'm going to check on each one of you. So I'm going to check on John. John, you look great. I want you to keep going and go over here. Jennifer, Jennifer, why don't you do a little bit more like this? That looks good. And then Michael's all of a sudden telling me, oh, this is bugging my hip. I'm going to have him change to something else. And I go right back to you and we just keep rolling on through. So my goal is your coach is really just sort of constantly flow through so it's not just like all right everybody's doing this and then i'll see in a half hour yeah i see in a half hour <laughs> yeah. right? kevin and i will be doing 12 ounce curls <laughs> <laughs> over in the corner. <laughs> okay time out get out get out <laughs> leave the check at the door <laughs> but so and, and i noticed on your website when i went and you want to check it out is parkfitsp.com and the first thing you do to, to work out here is you you fill out a what do you want what do you want out of it and then you come in and have a, a consult. So, I mean, what do you do? What do you do in this consult? I mean, how do you get somebody onboarded into Park Fitness? That's a great question. And, and that's probably one of the main areas that your, your average gym lacks in, right? They just want to get you in the door and get you signed up uh, without learning anything about you. And we look at it, especially with more of a personal experience. Like, we can't help you if we don't know where you want to go. So, in that initial assessment, if you will, you know, we want to find out, okay, where are we looking to go from here, right? What kind of goals do you have? And, and what's the end result that we're looking to achieve? And then, 
what have you tried? Where have you been? What's worked for you up to this point? What do you enjoy doing, right? Like, what, what do you find fun, if anything, when it comes to fitness or exercise? But most people can kind of hammer down a couple things they've done in the past that they really enjoyed. Um, what's your nutrition like, right? So we just kind of peel that onion and kind of figure out as much as we can. So that way we can, you know, tell you, here's where you are now, and here's where we want to get you, and here's how we're going to do that uh, via some exercise and maybe a little nutritional intervention and whatnot. So we're going to talk about, again, your goals, your health history, everything like that. We're going to push you through a movement screen to make sure we know where you're starting. So if you have an ache, a pain, a limitation, we know about it. We're not just going to throw you into a workout expecting you're going to be able to handle anything that's going to come your way in that moment. So we've got all that information. Our coaches have that information uh, before you even get out there on the floor. And then from there, we just meet you where you are, right? So we're going to build you up. We're not going to say, here's the workout as it's written, like fall in and good luck, right? All right. So you, you, men- you mentioned nutrition and nutrition counseling. I mean, that, that's all part of the deal as well. So we'll meet you where you are. Um, we have some people that come in and um, some literally say, I want zero nutrition because so you, you will. You'll have some trainers that say, my way or the highway. So you're going to do all these things or get out, right? And we look at it more of, as we say, everything here is optional, including results. So you can take this as far <laughs> as you want, right? Um, so along those same lines, you know, if you're somebody who wants a lot of nutrition uh, help, and Danny and I have done some stuff with a company called Precision Nutrition, um, if you want a lot of help where there to help you out. Um, but at the same time, if you want just a few pointers, now we are not registered dietitians. We do not prescribe diets. Um, so we look at it from morally a performance standpoint, and we're more there to give you suggestions rather than say, nope, you're going to follow this to a T. Uh, if somebody's looking for that, we refer them out. Okay. Interesting. So, I mean, you're really not focused necessarily on whether it be, you know, losing weight, getting more aerobic capacity to be able to, you know, hike or whatever it may be, but more sort of the whole, the whole body. Um, One stop shop. You know, the idea is that we'll sort of take you from, you know, A to Z. Uh, and we try to keep everything in house. So even if, you know, we have members that uh, might have a membership at another gym, we have members that have Pelotons, we have members that do a lot of other things, and they'll come to us and they'll ask, like, hey, what should I be doing here, here, here? And, you know, one of the things we'll say too is, like, well, how many days are you on that Peloton? Because, you know, we're already sitting a lot, right? Especially in COVID world. So maybe we only do that on these days. And, you know, how many days are you doing this? So we try to be, in a lot of ways, really their, their central figure in their health and fitness. And uh, obviously, outside side of medicine, but when it comes to anything exercise related, we try to be that hub for them. Sure. How did you guys get into this? I mean, you, you said you've been in a trainer for 20 some odd years and you're 50, going on 15. Yeah. No, I'm, a, I'm a little older. So, so uh, yeah. yeah. So, um, you know, I think I've always been interested in how the body works. Um, you know, I was somebody who uh, in college was pursuing pre-physical therapy. And before I switch it out, um, I just happened to uh, always have a passion, you know, and, and I think a lot of trainers, when they get into this industry, it's like, you're kind of that guy that tells your friends what to do when they're working out. Like it usually starts that way. Um, <laughs> some never grow out of that, but uh, you know, that was something where, you know, it was just like this thing. And, and I had a buddy of mine that was like, man, I just talked to one of these personal trainers and Bally total fitness was the first stop for me uh, up in white marsh. And uh, he was like, you got to get certified and you know, this, this, and this. And I'm like, man, let me go look into this. And that was really it at 19 years old um, and started down that path and then, you know, move forward, fast forward to today. Yeah. So I Are guess you, Danny? <laughs> like, uh, like many teenage boys, you know, you come across the, uh, the bench press for the first time and, uh, you just fall in love, right? So, yeah. uh, yeah, you know, in high school, I worked out on and off, played sports. And then, um, uh, it wasn't until uh, I graduated high school and, uh, kind of took a year off. I was uh, playing music and, and, uh, you know, partying, having a good time and not really, uh, you know, paying any attention to my health and fitness. And then, uh, after about a year of that, I was like, man, I just feel like working out again and, uh, realized how out of shape I'd got in just a year. Uh, so I started getting back into the weights and everything. And, um, you know, when I was uh, in school, I, I had no idea at that time, like when I graduated high school, I didn't know you could study like exercise science. It's just not something I ever thought about right. pursuing. But as I watched my body change, I kind of always knew that, you know, I wanted to help people. I just didn't know in what capacity. And I really fell in love with just, you know, physiology and how the body could change and adapt to different stimulus and things. And then um, started, you know, studying anatomy, physiology, went down that path in school and then uh, met this guy few years later and the rest is history so you how long have you guys been working together uh well let's see man i think we've known of each other 
since, oh, yeah, probably that long. Um, and then we worked, we started working together in 08 or 09? I think it was 09. So I had been a, uh, a member at the gym that Joe was the uh, fitness director of at the time. So he, uh, he was kind of running the fitness side of things and uh, just become friends with a lot of the staff. I'd go in there to work out. And at the time, I was uh, working as a trainer myself but in Annapolis. So I lived in Annapolis, but I drive to Severna Park because uh, my dad had a membership at that gym that Joe was uh, running. And uh, so I'd come up there to work out and just see everybody and did that for a few years. And then uh, one of our uh, our uh, friends and <laughs> guy, uh, Brian McMurray, and uh, he uh, he was a coach there. And one day, this was you know after a few years of working out there, but he had caught wind that I was training in Annapolis. And uh, he was like, well, Dan, why don't you work here? And I was like, well, I, I never thought of it like that, right? I just never crossed my mind. I always thought, oh, this is, I don't want to mix business and pleasure, right? So long story short, um, Mac, uh, was his nickname. He, he said, hey, Joe, why don't you give Dan an interview? Like, not that I was even seeking a job, but he, Mac just kind of made the whole thing happen. And I was like, all right. He just kept pushing and pushing. So uh, Joe, uh, maybe begrudgingly, was like, OK, I'll give this guy an interview. What the hell? Shut him up. Yeah. Uh, but then uh, we hit it off. Yeah, it was the uh, best interview I ever had. Um, I think we just sort of talked more about everything but the job during uh, that interview. And, uh, and it was one of those things where you realize, like, you know, this is somebody special. And, uh, you know, moving forward, like, you want this person to be around. You want this person to be on your team. And, uh, and then, you know, here we are now in our own uh, endeavor, and we're four years into this. So you and you guys just ended up putting your heads together and said, hey, you know, we, we, can, we can build a better mousetrap? Uh, pretty much. You know, we were, we were on this path at a, at a previous place, and then we sort of ran into this uh, creative difference, if you will. And we very much saw that this is where it was. This is what we wanted to do as far as the community, the connection, uh, the small group aspect, all this uh, this stuff. And um, at that point, we're like, well, wait a minute. Why don't we just do it on our own? And uh, Park Fitness came to be in uh, October of 17. In 17? Yeah. Yeah. How many members do you have now? Man, so if you asked me that before COVID, uh, <laughs> yeah, I mean, COVID put a whammy on everything. Yeah, yeah. We were right before COVID. We were probably right around that 200 member mark. And for a lot of gyms um, like us that are a personal training studio, you know, some cap at about 150, some will cap at around 400. Um, you know, it, it's really there's no right answer. It's really just what fits for you. Um, 2020, like I'm sure for a lot of people, was a big year with high expectations for us. You know, um, it was the year. Well, stressful or anything was, was it? not no, stressful no, good, good, good. No. it was the year we're going to take our first vacations and then all these other things were lining up like all right you know 2020 and then obviously like the whole world hit a once in a century uh, pandemic so uh yeah we uh you know we got knocked back a little bit um but the goal is to you know get back on the horse and uh continue to grow we've had a great couple months so yeah, and testament to our community a lot yeah. of people stuck it out yeah. with us and i i would venture to say and i and i don't know and you may know the statistic but uh, we jokingly talked about January rolls around and everybody rolls into the gym with their credit card and, you know, and then you see them for three weeks and off they go into the ether until they realize they're still being charged that monthly fee on their credit card. And sure, they go, Wait sure. a minute, what's this like the Netflix bill? You know, what the hell am I paying this for? I mean, I would imagine you guys have probably a lot lower turnover rate than most gyms. Would that be accurate, you think? Absolutely. And, uh, you know, you got a little more skin in the game when you come here. We're certainly not the least expensive option in the town, but we're worth it. The value is there. And that's one of the big separators. So, yeah, you're not going to come in here and pay $9 a month and then, uh, you know, afford to forget about it, right? And that's how a lot of those gyms exist. They they hedge their bets that people are going to sign up and not show up. Uh, whereas with us, um, it is a bit of a higher ticket, but also a much higher value. And, yeah, we're, we're kind of making a deal in agreement if you will. Well, like che- you- cheapest is rarely best. I mean, it's... Uh, <laughs> There's a lot of truth to that. <laughs> it's like, what, what is it? It's you want it, want it fast, cheap, and... Uh- and and good right uh, you know pick, right. Two. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Another, pick two end, end of the conversation there so how does your membership program work you said people can come in for you know i can be heavy nutrition heavy aerobics heavy weight type thing i mean how does that is it a membership absolutely and, and like a lot of gyms like us there is there's a, it's a monthly membership um beyond that really it boils down to what we discover in that starting point meeting so we set up this time we, we sit down talk and really it's all about you 
So we want to know about your goals, where you've been, where you want to go, what things have worked well for you, what haven't. And as we dive into that, it sort of puts us on a path. So we have, we have multiple different options for the membership. They all do come down to a monthly fee. But overall, it's really your path. And once we have this opportunity to discover um, all these different things about you and what you are comfortable doing, uh, it allows us to make some recommendations, go from there. But we also were big on try before you buy. So we have a number of different trial things. I think right now, We've got, um, yeah, I think, a summer uh, kickstart going on. I think it's 14 days for $89, and it gives you access to everything, personal training, team training, nutrition, you name it. Uh, it's a great way to try us out and see how it fits for you. Okay. Yeah. But but so if, if I were to join up for a membership, then, you know, I, I don't, don't want to get into the prices or anything like that. But then if I wanted, does that include, like, the group classes and the group private training? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yep. I can come in and I can use the you know, the machines and, and sort of. So, uh, yeah, so you'll come in and uh, everything we do is on a schedule. So um, you'll see on the door, it says by appointment only. And part of that is you'll book your appointments. So we've got a scheduling app. And what you'd use, John, is you just open up scheduling app and you say, okay, uh, I've got seven different options today to come in and work out. Um, and then based off of what you're looking to do, am I looking to do a small group training session? Am I looking to do a, a large group class team training? You look at it, you pick it, you book it, and then you come in and do it. Okay, and that's included in the monthly thing. Yep, yep, yep. Okay, awesome. Now, question for you what what's your what are your general hours i mean i know you're appointment only i mean and i'm going to say that i i probably can't pick a class at 3 a.m when i can't sleep or something like that uh are you a pretty much like a i, I would say you're probably like a 6 a.m type of a business because most people would like to get something done earlier in the morning but six to six or something is that yeah, so we are working around people's work hours right so we get going as early as 6 a.m and then we have workouts as they start as late as 6.30 p.m. So we're kind of working, you know, before the 9 to 5 and after that okay. kind of period there. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So, and then you're probably pretty quiet during the day. and Typically. And we'll get going like uh, late afternoon, like 4 p.m. We pick back up. So we've got some folks getting off or that, you know, don't have to go to work or they're working from home, as are a lot of people during this yeah. past year or so. Uh, but, yeah, most most people are coming in that early morning and 9 a.m. That's a popular spot, too. So what are the goals of most of your people coming in? What do they want? Is it weight loss? Honestly, most I think want to feel better. They want to feel good. Yeah, feeling good is. Uh, it's, just, it's just a vague, just a vague. I, I need to feel better. Yeah, and that's different for everybody, right? Yeah, and that's yeah. that's where that uh, that starting point session really you know helps us you know, kind of figure it, out what does that mean for you. It's funny. I used to own a travel agency just down the road way back when, and um, had a woman that worked for me that was overweight, and she went on this diet. And I don't know what it was, but she was you know, and I was like, hey, what's your impetus you know what's what's pushing you here and she says i want to be walking down the beach in a bathing suit with my husband and just have somebody do a double take on me and not for the reason because i'm <laughs> i'm overweight and you know he says i'm not looking for somebody to hit on me i'm not looking for anything i just want to you know be walking down with and just somebody do a double take and i'm like that's that's like a great mental kind of a goal that you've got. And I remember when she achieved it, she came back in from like a week at ocean city and she's like, like, Hey, what, what's with the, what's with the smile? It was like, my son's friend says, Oh my God, your mom's hot. And it was like, you know, she probably says, makes you feel pretty good. Well, well, she, she's like, my life is complete. You know, uh, don't get any better than that. And that's great. Like the more specific you, you can get, the better. Right. So um, oftentimes people obviously, you know, why do you want to work out? Well, I want to feel better. But what does that mean? And why is that important? And then you just keep, keep peeling back. Why is that important? And then you go to the next goal. Um, but when you get down to maybe that third, fourth, maybe fifth, why? Right. You start peeling back a little bit. Then you have that compelling reason. And that's what's going to keep you going, because you know, we can really, really be motivated after pulling up Instagram and seeing a picture of like the rock right at four in the morning. And he's like, I just finished up a really awesome workout. And it's like, cool. In that moment, I'm super stoked and I'm ready to get after it. And then I step outside and it's 90 degrees and the humidity is hundred percent. I'm like, I don't feel like going for a run. No way. I'm going back inside on the couch where it's cool. And I I briefly thought about riding my bike up here. I'm down in Annapolis and I do the, uh, you know, I do the trail and I knew, I briefly thought about it and I did exactly what you said. I walked outside. And, oh, hell no. <laughs> <laughs> you probably would have looked like you had gone swimming. Yeah. Yeah. Indoors. Today it is, it is like 94 and that gross. Oh yeah. Oh, Maryland, yeah. gross Maryland. Cut heat. it with a knife. Air conditioning helps this time of year. So uh, what, what is four years in here? You've seen lots of people come and stay, come and go and everything else. What's your, what do you, each of you guys have your biggest success stories? What do you, 
not naming names, but I mean, is it just, you know, is, is there somebody that came in here weighing 900 pounds and, you know, dropped to 200? I mean, that seems a bit. Sure. You know, it, it's a great question, John. I don't know if any one person, at least for me, stands out, but if there's probably a big, biggest surprise, and I know, Danny, I've talked about this a number of times, you know, we knew how much we wanted a, a, a space, a gym where people felt comfortable. But we had no clue how much our community would take off to the to the level that it has. And if there's one big success for me, and I probably can speak for Danny, too, about this one, it, it's just how amazing our people are and just how uh, supportive and and connected and uh, just uh, open and inclusive everybody is. I mean, uh, we've had conversations just even recently with a brand new person coming in and just being able to walk up to a handful of our members and say, hi, this is so-and-so, and and this is her first workout. And then immediately, just interactions and conversations. Sure, get sucked sucked right in. (laughs) Welcome (laughs) right into the group. Yeah, and and my gosh. And um, Or, you know, we we just recently um, obtained a new member, actually two, um, through a Facebook question somebody posted on a uh, on a group and immediately a handful of our members just jumped on and just you know said wonderful things and didn't have to and but but took it upon themselves so i would say i, I think the biggest success is just how lucky in, in many ways amazing this group of people we have is and and, and sometimes just being in all of that and like well, we're not worthy we're not worthy <laughs> of this it. group well, you know I, I gotta think that a lot of that has to do with that you are Local. I mean, I, I, I'm not sure. I mean, you said you lived in Annapolis, Danny, at one point, and you were, I'm presuming, up in White Marsh or something <laughs> at some point. But, um, you know, you, you guys are local. This is a locally owned business, which is what the focus of the local business spotlight is. So it's not it's not this corporate. It's here, and you're part of the community. So, I mean, that makes all the sense in the world that the, the community comes together for you. Yeah, and I, I think, you know, I have to concur with, with Joe's statement there. Um, it, it's It's hard to find one single you know moment where it's like wow that just feels good and you know we jokingly say we have a hard time stopping to smell the roses we should probably do that more often (laughs) um but you know from that ten thousand foot view looking at just some of the amazing friendships that have been formed here people that didn't know each other prior to you know 2017 uh that met inside the gym and now they are best friends so best friendships have been formed people are traveling together um and doing all these cool things and and that's really fun and and um it's hard for us to take credit for it. I don't think we can. You know, it's not any one person. It's not us. We didn't create this. It's not like magic, right? Like, yeah, we may have opened the doors and outfitted with this equipment. But, uh, you know, at the end of the day, it, it takes you know, a special person and a group of people to make all that happen. It's not just any one person. That's fantastic. Yeah. Any kids? Do you work with the kids here or not really? Probably high school accompanied by a parent um, will we'll, we'll bring in. But for the most part, we are just that general population where, you know, mostly uh, a lot of it is uh, parents who want to feel better. Yeah. yeah. And we, we know our lane and we, we try to stay in it. And, you know, we might have some kids that come in and, and, and give it a try. And we, we certainly have a lot of um, members with children who will come in and give it a whirl. But, um, you know, you want to be around people that are like you, right? Similar right. age, right. similar goals and, yeah. and whatnot, life experience and, yeah. and, and such. Um, so and not to say that we can't accommodate, but at the same time, you know, we can we can also recommend a, a lot of other places that might be more not, suitable for it's that. Just, it's just not your thing. Yeah. I get it. Everybody, exactly. everybody, you, you, know, you know what? What's your world? is you know what you operate in well i i noticed that your name is your, your website is park fit sp okay and initially i thought i would say well park fitness that's like sort of an abbreviation for saverna park but that seems like primed like you could put park fit dot gb for gaithersburg or or dc for washington dc uh are there any plans for expansion you know, uh, never say never, right? That's probably the best answer. Never say never. It's a stupid question coming out of COVID, but <laughs> sure thing, right? Yeah, right, right. Well, you know, I, I think honestly, I think uh, Park Fit SP because it was available. Yeah, that was <laughs> a huge driving factor in that decision. I, I think we looked at parkfitness.com and somebody wanted sixteen thousand dollars for it so we were like okay we're not going to go that route and that's, we had to have a have a weight room that's right exactly <laughs> right 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 and uh, we considered park dot fitness but this was before like the dot the, 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 it just wasn't the happening then so and people i'm still, I'm still like, not big on that yeah. i've got a, a somebody i work with and they're they've got a dot agency and it's like okay my name well, yeah. where's the rest of it like if that takes <laughs> off maybe we revisit that but uh yeah but so any any expansions maybe possibly uh, you know, I think, uh, I never say never, never. say never. Yeah. yeah. Probably the best way. Never say never. Um, you know, I, I think some of our greatest mentors have done amazing things with one gym 
you know, and um, some of the most profitable gyms out there as a single entity. Um, there's also people who have done great with two, three, five, ten. Um, so it's it's definitely something, I, and I'm sure it's crossed our mind at different times. It's like, huh, well, that could be cool here. But uh, I, I think for us, uh, to make it also turnstile, we want to make sure we would nail it 100% before we'd feel like we'd want to hit that right. next one. Right, that makes sense all over. And you guys are located in the heart of Severna Park, and so I'm going to present that that's where the majority of your folks are within that because i mean let's face it a gym needs to be somewhat convenient to to work where is your core people obviously i'm serena park but how far out do you draw from yeah well as you mentioned you know that kind of five to ten mile radius uh, that's that's the number one driver for somebody going to a gym or not going is convenience that's actually you know a huge huge um consideration but um definitely Severna park uh, we go as far north as we've got some people in glen burnie we've had people that lived in baltimore that ha- that work down in the area but sure. uh, and the greater Severna park area so millersville pasadena uh a little bit of annapolis the 21409 so you look in that arnold annapolis area bridges are weird they they, they they're like walls I, know, I was talking to a business that had a, a competitor at the Annapolis Town Center, and they were down in Edgewater, and they said, how can we get some of the Annapolis business coming down here? And they said they get to the South River, and they like, oh, my gosh, that's, that's, like, that's like North Korea. We can't go there. You know, we must turn around, must turn around. And I timed it one time from my house uh, down near Bay Ridge in Annapolis. By the time I got up to the Town Center, found a parking spot in the garage, got out, walked over the bridges, and got into the business— I could get in my car out down to Edgewater, park in an open parking lot, literally right in front of the business, walk in the door and be there in like three minutes less time. But it was, you know, I'm, I'm sure it was, you know, three miles more, but it, it's just amazing. Perception's so, everything, right? It, it really is. You guys have built really a pretty incredible business. In, Thank you. For, in, I appreciate in that. In four years. And I mean, again, I can say it was, uh, I came in here knowing that you've got a little bit of a cult following with uh, – Certainly some of the people that I know here, and I, I can sort of see why. Uh, you guys are, uh, you know, personal. Even though I didn't get the high five, but okay, you know, we'll. <laughs> we'll get you a double on the way out. That's true. We're not that's only big on the greeting, that's, that's but true. also I might, might get back. tripped on the way out, but that's, <laughs> <laughs> we'll see. We'll see that. But I want to thank Joe Bosick and Danny O'Malley for your time today. Um, you want to check out parkfitsp.com, and it's appointment only, so if you wanted to – create that appointment you can do that online right um can they call you too absolutely what's the phone number 410-432-2113 do you just roll that off now you know See, i'm always afraid i'm gonna give the wrong number i'm like is it my number is it my fiance's number is it an old number of a place we may or may not have worked for like you just never know it's so funny how times have changed it's you know now it's all oh go to the web and it's all right there it's it's all online it's the easiest thing and then it's you know people ask me like you know what's your kid's phone number Speed dial, too. Right. You know, I mean, I, you figured that out. I don't plan on ever getting arrested, but I'm definitely screwed if it's like you get one phone call. I'm like, <laughs> it's a pay phone. Yeah. I'll, can I call 911 from <laughs> help? I'm locked up. That so probably won't know. be the worst. That probably won't be the worst phone call they've got. You know? Hey, this is Danny. <laughs> I don't know can, any can numbers. You call my girlfriend? <laughs> Thank you guys very much. Congratulations on. I wouldn't say your anniversary, but, you know, going strong since 2017, especially going strong through 2020. And I know I remember seeing some of Eva's posts on Facebook out in the parking lot and back when we all couldn't be sitting at a table across from one another. So that's uh, fantastic. And anybody listening, come check them out. Parkfitsp.com. Joe Bosick and Danny Mumali are co-owners. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. yeah. How many how many other employees do you have? Uh, you know, it sounds crazy. Well, uh, well we have one. Okay. So uh, it was, it's a group of three. MJ, she's phenomenal. She yes, is, uh, couldn't have found a better coach to come in and, and uh, be part of our team. Um, there was a time, it was probably a couple of years ago, we did one of our first challenges. And, uh, you know, we, we tried to do a good job with our social media marketing. And literally, she's sitting across from Danny, and they're going through their starting point meeting. And she, at one point, she stops and says, wait a minute, wait a minute. You mean to tell me that all of this is just you and some other guy? Yeah. So uh, now it's you, some other guy, and, uh, and, and a girl, girl. and yes. she's great. Sounds like a sitcom. <laughs> it does. <laughs> it really does. Yeah. Guys, thank you very much. I appreciate your time today. And, again, congratulations. Like incredible business you build up here in Severna Park. Uh, John, thank you so much. It's our pleasure. We appreciate you coming out. Thanks for listening to this week's Local Business Spotlight. Please make sure to visit ionanapolis.net for all your local news, events, and opinion. 
And in case you haven't already, please subscribe to the Eye on Annapolis Daily News Brief, where we bring you all the day's local news direct to your phone, tablet, or computer in about 10 minutes. It comes to you at 6 a.m. every Monday through Friday, and you can subscribe on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts.